make host. Okay. Okay, and you can make me co-host again and also record on your computer if, if for, for security. Thank you. Okay, good. Is it going to automatically record online? I've never done Oh, that. here is uh, Ryan. Now I gave the, the, the host uh, session, the host rights to Kate because as you saw, my normal internet died last Thursday and I don't have it back. And I'm now on cell phone data, so it might, I don't know. Yeah, how long. Ryan, the host. Okay, you can do that, yeah. And Natalie, you are on different uh, windows today, that's fine. Uh, there was Ronald, he said he couldn't come today. And we will see who else is showing up. So today, I think it's the in interesting thing, but what do we think that integral is? And so I invite you all for short uh, check-in about your, your, your way of being today as an integralist. And then we dive into the, <laughs> the topic, okay? I'm always happy to dive in. I'm usually holding myself back, just so you know. <laughs> I wore my, my um, turquoise necklace today. I got this for my 60th birthday some years back. And so in honor of um, teal and turquoise second tier, I'm wearing it. Uh, I, my question is, um, Ken Wilber makes a distinction between uh, two levels at integral. And the first, I think the first being teal and then the next one up being turquoise. And I, if I recall correctly, the labels for those are integral for the first and then holistic for the second. I, there may be some, that may be a fairly loose thing. Do we want to talk about uh, all of second tier that is both teal and turquoise today? Or are we trying, to, or are we going to try to do a, make a distinction, just mush them all together? Um, can we, shall we just assume that we're mushing them all together? Yeah, and we, we see how it goes. And if we see that we need more, uh, hey, Jeremy, that we need more time, then we can do another session, you know? Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's important to keep, keep it together as opposed to all the first stages. But then sure. when you mix between one and the other, I think it's less uh, important to keep that separate than it was sure. in the first tier stages. Okay. Agreed. So I'm, unless, unless we collectively decide otherwise, I'm going to as assume that today we're talking about second tier, meaning both teal and turquoise, and we discuss them together and then occasionally for fun we can make distinctions. So that's, so I see it as abundance instead of scarcity, numero uno, abundance on all across all levels as just the working assumption that there is abundance and how, how do we deal with it. And the ability, I'd say number one, the number two, and then I'll stop, is the fact that we can even see the first six levels and see them as that they exist, that we're no longer standing on uh, exclusively on any one of those rungs. I think of them as rungs in a ladder, although that's a limited metaphor. But we can see, we, we start to grasp the whole ladder and we begin to be able to realize that we are active on all of them ourselves and that we can, in, at this level, we increasingly are able to consciously be in and from each level, like switching channels on a radio. We can switch from the classical to the, to the punk or the rap or whatever as we choose and enjoy them as appropriate. And, and increasingly we are able to interact with people at those levels in a positive way. So, and there are others, but I'll stop there. That's what this means to me. I can go. Um, my name is Tim, and uh, for me, I'm still learning. I'm very much in the process of learning some of the basic integral vocabulary. So I can't speak to the um, to the levels, uh, the stages, or those uh, the colors with any fluidity yet. But um, I think 
one of the things that I notice is it's the ability to recognize what level, sorry, what um, what dimension we're speaking from. So there's an aspect of self-awareness and there's an aspect within that of um, hopefully within the group of being uh, willing to recognize how we relate to other people and sort of that we may be speaking from one dimension or one perspective and that it's valuable to get feedback from the others. That's one of the things that I like about the crossfire is the idea that my own self-awareness is going to be enriched by outside perspectives that are not mine because they have a different location. So that's it for me. Um, to me, I'm thinking of one of the massive things that really seems to come on with integral is just like um, um, a massive amount of nuance, like appreciating um, huge amounts of diversity and then actually being able to like grade them in terms of sort of hierarchy and uh, development. Um, I think um, like development becomes a, a really huge thing, like um, kind of individually like maps and um, I guess we kind of all know because of the, the spiral, but like looking back at um, history and seeing just how far we've how far we've come on so many different levels, like to have not just that, but then in in the quadrants and the types and all this kind of stuff. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know. To me, there's something like um, it's debatable whether it's a spiritual kind of thing, but there's something about the integral stage where they're kind of like such a power of kind of ability to be able to see wholeness to be able to see connections to be able to see how things fit in to be able to judge where they are in the hierarchy um and to me i think that comes with like a massive amount of energy for some reason like kind of kundalini was sort of um a push to uh have emergence um and also at times a kind of effortlessness to be able to kind of sit back and see all this kind of life process. And um, I've heard that second tier comes with like a massive drop in anxiety because there's a sort of, there's less of this I'm right, they're wrong kind of vibe of the first tier and an ability, at least, at least when we're sort of uh, doing into a well, to be able to kind of abide with everyone and everything and appreciate that everybody has a, um, everybody has a, has a value and something to say. Um, something that I'd be curious, I'm curious to talk about is um, if Integral is appreciating that everyone has a value and something to say, what is different about the Integral stage from the inclusivity of Green stage in this way? Yeah, because I, <clears throat> just what Paul just said, I'm right, and they're you know, taking away that I'm right and you're wrong and all of that, <clears throat> and including greater level of inclusiveness, that's going to pretty much throw out everybody that we view up there in the theory realm of integral out of the picture, isn't it? Including Ken, I mean, as being an integral thinker, because they, <laughs> if, if you're in that group on Facebook of the post metaphysics group, uh, you know, any of you on that post metaphysical group on Facebook, those are people who've been around a really, really long time and have spent a lot of time thinking about this theory and writing about it and etc and um they, they think some stuff is really wrong you know and i i think i don't even know if they consider themselves to be thinkers, but i i would assume they are you know i, I know that they are talking often a lot about um the the tendency to um veer toward knowing rather than assimilating and understanding, you know, like theorizing rather than actually the, the assimilation and the understanding of the of the levels or memes. And but then they then they all kind of criticize the stage development, the stage levels themselves. So it's all kind of an it becomes like a more open question, I think. And it seems to be a greater level of complexity that you're able to hold. But that wouldn't necessarily mean that everything's hunky dory then, you know. 
And I think there's a mixture of, of confusing states with stages, you know, like states of awareness where we're like, ah, oh, we're so open and, you know, and, and, and that maybe is not the same thing. I just spent like three or four hours talking with Tom Murray, if anybody knows who he is. So I'm kind of like in another mindset. So I, I would highly recommend him for Crossfire. He's, he's really kind of a deep thinker on all this. Yeah, I guess I'll pop in here too. Um, just coming from a slightly different point of view as to, as to integral. Um, second tier, I, I don't really use that in my own framework or language, but I think the closest would be the integral structure. And just to mirror um, what, what Kate was saying, um, in this expression of integral, it's a leap beyond this sort of categorizing, spatializing, and systematizing form of thinking, which is already present in so-called orange. Um, and that kind of spatializing perspectivalism is the leap that the integral moves out of in order to open itself back up to the magical unperspectable, to the mythical rhythmicity, to the soul. Um, otherwise, to, to, um, to spatialize these dimensions would be to, to categorically leave them apart, to abstractly integrate them, to see the, to see the kind of the developmental line or trajectory. But um, in the integral expression, this a perspectival integral expression, the idea is to free ourselves from that abstract spatialization and allow those things to be all co-present. So I think for Gepser's expression of integrality, it's this move from synthesis and categorization to uh, what he calls cystasis and synirasis, which is a kind of a wearing of the whole as this a-dimensional or multi-dimensional fluidity. It does, it does sound somewhat similar to the flex flow and the second tier descriptions. It just doesn't have as much of a categorical emphasis or a developmental e emphasis. Everything is a little bit more present um, and it's a little bit more what Nora Bateson describes as warm data or um, her term symothesy, which is a sort of um, not systematizing a thing entirely and allowing it to kind of live and be dynamic and, and tracing that energy and allowing that energy to kind of flow. So it's a little different. It's a little hard to explain, um, but it's a move out of categorical abstraction and into concrete presence. And if, unless we're able to be present with these structures in us, um, we're still kind of doing the mental. And that, that's sort of Gepser's um, injunction there, the, the, the difficult leap into actually concretizing the magic and mythic and even the mental itself and to get what the mental's doing all the time is spatialization. So it's concretizing for, for Gepser, this leap, um, which is able to bring forth all of these different structures in co-presence. And I want to continue with that because so far I hear you all uh, speaking in theories or in ideas and I want to add an experience. I have uh, the experience when I, among people who have the integral state of awareness or of thinking at least, but better awareness, uh, it feels different. When I'm in a crowd with people of this uh, level, like in the conferences, it's just, you know, it's, it's a completely different experience. You don't have to fight. You don't have to, to feel uncomfortable. You, you are free to say what you need to say. And they are welcoming what you say and there is debate possible without um, dismissing the other person maybe dismissing sometimes the what they say but not the person which is normally uh, connected when you fight against uh, the arguments of somebody else and so there is a higher awareness of being together of creating community of how to talk how to how to behave and also the awareness of when it doesn't happen you know it out of your own experience how it feels like when another person talks out of a different level uh, and so you don't need to to fight it you know and this uh, i see is a big 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 difference to green groups and to to, to talk about what natalie said um, that uh, in green groups there is still this 
I'm right, I'm wrong, or you should see that in this uh, uh, way. And as you did the crossfire last time, it was a perfect example how uh, on an integral level um, things can develop in a in a good way. And I'm waiting for a really controversial topic when this will be a little bit more uh, at, uh, at, at stake. But my experience is I would love to stay amongst integral people all my life. <laughs> Really briefly, but I had that experience at the What Now conference in Denver 15 months ago. That was Ken Wilbur and all those folks, and that was my experience there too. And just to spark future conversations, I was aware of an energy flow among people in a way that I never have been at any of the other levels. And I'm not psychic, but I was, even so, I was sensing the we space in an energetic way. I guess I'll say something since I haven't said anything yet, but uh, I'm extremely tired this morning. <laughs> um, I uh, had a late night and took a bunch of magnesium, so I'm like feeling like I'm kind of drunk. So I'm just going to be quiet for a while and listen while I drink my caffeine and hopefully I wake up in a little bit. Yeah, and I would invite you also to share something out of your experience. How did you realize that you came out of green or in what stage you think you are now? How, what is the characteristics that makes you think that we are in, in integral, you know? That would be interesting to me to know, but you are free to tell, to say what you want to say. Um, Ryan, I'm in the same boat with feeling a little bit drunk with tiredness. Just that... <laughs> Um, looking forward to changing the time if that's something that we can do. And um, the inclusion of a sense of hierarchy and a sense of I'm right has actually been part of my transition from green into integral. Um, I was in the green stage for a really long time in a really, really deep way where um, that sense of a perspectival madness that Ken talks about was really, really... Um, overpowering in my system and so uh, rediscovering like a, a coming down from the ecstatic higher states while in green stage supported me with um, transitioning into the integral stage as I found a, a greater sense of like oh what I have to share what I know about myself and the world has value and it can be um, there can be more truth to my perspective than the perspective of other earlier stages. And none of them are wrong, certainly. I still feel that deep sense of open-heartedness, but I, I saw um, that sense of hierarchy, a greater sense of organization, and greater sense of increasing complexity of understanding through life. It strikes me that one of the things that I was really moved by when one of my clients, I'm a, I'm a body therapist, um, one of them was telling me about Claire Graves's work and this concept of spiral dynamics was the first place I heard of that phrase, um, but that it was a sort of a framework of development that allowed you, it recognized that people go up and down. We don't achieve something and then just sort of hang out there. And so Heidi, to your, your earlier statement, I wanted to say, you know, <clears throat> I think for me, it's less about what's, you know, what makes me in whatever stage I'm in, but it's what stage am I in right now? And recognizing that within the conversation, even within between two or three sentences, I might drop or shift. And one of the things that I love about the idea of an integral informed uh, conversation and community is that people can say, hey, just like you did at first, like, hey, we've been operating in this, this level or this dimension. And what if we work experientially here? Or what if we share emotionally or whatever the things are? Again, I can't like, I don't know the names of all the categories, but um, that's something that I'm really excited about. And I love what I've been hearing other people say, because it reflects that knowing of like, oh, here are all the characteristics of this level. For me, I don't have the name, I don't have the, all the associations with each color yet. Um, but I love that you guys are operating from that, um, 
multidimensional perspective, being able to name, oh, this is where we're located right now. This is where we're located. This is where we're located. Just um, to echo what you were saying, Tim, some of my integral friends say the language that they use, oh, now I'm going to put on my orange hat or now I'm going to put on my green hat. And I kind of think that that kind of um, signifies kind of like a meta awareness of your own perspective so that your perspective, whatever it may be, is not the end all be all only world, only reality, right? That, so there are multiple perspectives, multiple realities, and hopefully we can be aware of that. Well, Heidi, I can give an experience, and this is, um, gets to a different topic we may want to pursue in another um, day. How it, I think as we go farther up the developmental levels, it gets harder to distinguish states from stages. But this is an experience I had on a meditation retreat with my guru when I was in an alternate state of consciousness altogether, um, and which is a whole other subject. But I had this moment, I don't know if this qualifies as a Ken show, but I had a moment of clear breakthrough insight at the level of that some traditions would call universal mind, where I saw that each one of us, our intellect, our discursive intellect is one little drop of universal mind in the same way that our consciousness is one drop from the ocean of the totality, whatever. But I saw so clearly, I mean, this was an experience, a visceral experience, but I have to use words. So to that degree, it has to be conceptual. But I saw that my little tiny piece of the mind in, at level of intellect was like one mosaic, one tesser, one little mosaic piece in a vast, vast, vast mosaic. And I have one little piece of it, and that's my piece. And that's uniquely my piece, but it's part of a vastly larger picture. And so that piece is real and true for me, although I can distort it in ways. But even if I get it absolutely accurately, I've only got a tiny piece of it. And there's a much bigger picture that makes a really big picture. And, but I've got a piece of it. And it's really me and it's really my piece. And it was the, the, along with that insight, at the same time came the realization that I'm wrong. I'm wrong about everything. I've, at the very best, I've got this tiny piece. I felt like 50 pounds rolled off each shoulder. I felt like I was floating two feet above the ground. I was laughing the rest of the day. And, you know, I just couldn't help. I just burst out laughing. It was the funniest thing that's ever happened. I'm wrong about everything. You know, I have a PhD. I have a PhD and a half. I mean, it's just the tiniest, tiniest piece. I don't have to be right. And someone spoke earlier about there's less anxiety at this level because you're not upholding. I'm right. So I need to show how the rest of you are wrong. If you disagree with me, that was gone. It evaporated. I really, I was floating two feet off the ground the rest of the day. And I still laugh when I think I'm wrong. I'm wrong. So that's a great relief. And I've kept that kind of, there, there is still a sense of levity and I am just as opinionated as I've ever been <laughs> and always happy to share. But I hope that's kind of brought a little more lightness and humor and willingness to let go. So that was a visceral experience that I had. It was like a 20th of a second breakthrough, but it like, it cut me. my life has been a little bit different since then. So there's an experience for you, Heidi. I hope it is relevant to the topic. I can, uh, I can, I feel myself like getting really excited just listening to you, Karen. Like, I'm not even sure if it's anything you're saying, I suppose. Well, I think it is, and also the energy. And it's kind of, um, um, I've had this theory recently that like in the chakras, they talk about the things swirling around. So they go like, there's a relationship between seventh and first and like sixth and second and like third and fifth, which I've been thinking about in relation to the spiral dynamics, like, uh, green at six has this kind of affinity with two, the kind of like tribal and all this kind of stuff. So I won't ramble too much on, but to me, there's this really strong seventh chakra vibe to integral, like to be able to like be this massive holistic net. Um, some of like the the matrix of integral theory kind of does feel like a feel like a net in in terms of theory, but also the embodiment of it. Like there's so much to to be open to and to make distinctions. And I think what also comes with that, which is my experience whenever I'm around integral is just like crap tons of excitement, just like first chakra, like, like buzzing up, like kind of, um, uh, people have talked about like Eros and all this kind of stuff. And I think 
that that for me is one of the most obvious ways that I experience integral people is like massively different. Like I, I get on with greens and there's often like great for emotions, but there isn't this, um, I don't know, as much kind of passion. Like I think something integral sort of comes out is like the awareness of purpose um, and that things really do matter precisely because everything's connected. Um, that everything you do has an, has an impact on everything else. And I think there's some drive to like want to be able to see that. And then also I think like want to, um, to be able to do stuff and to be able to contain all that, like all that creative kind of primal energy. Um, Paul, I agree with you about the excitement and the new level of, of available energy that we have um, when our perspective becomes so much wider. And it also feels true that that transition from green into second tier can be really, really hard for some people and um, cause us to go into bouts of depression while like all of this new shadow material comes up and we feel very disorganized and not quite able to uh, move and transition between all of these new levels of understanding that are becoming, or old levels of understanding that are becoming really, really clear again. So there's that like a uh, transition that's very challenging. Yeah, I'd, I'd massively agree with that. I think I'm sort of strong for like a decade dealing with, um, dealing with some of my stuff and like with green. I think like two things for me, one is anger. Um, I feel like anger shows up at green, but it's more like it's my anger, it's personal thing rather than um the permission to get angry about something in the objective world and i also think th this comes with this sort of the primal stuff but like boundaries like really like rock solid boundaries or um being protective or really wanting to do something like sometimes when i'm around greens i i just get the i've kind of joked with people about this that i could just walk up to them and just kick them right in the nuts and they'd still empathize with me they'd still find a reason why um you know, I was suffering or whatever it is. And I've had loads of experience of green where it's just like, um, I often have so much, I wouldn't just say anger, but sort of fiery passion. And it almost, it just never goes like, um, they just can't hold it. I think because it, it sort of falls into the objective realm, which is kind of a bit of a, almost doesn't exist a little bit in green. So, um, and, and also I'm aware of like, I keep going back to the forum post about it's lonely at the top. I think that's really quite true, actually. Um, I think for a, as, as kind of high operating as integral people are, I do think there probably is a fair amount of um, loneliness and struggle um, to get to the place of realizing you're into or, or, or maybe needing peers or, um, as you say, Natalie, like dealing with sort of new shadow or new uh, new stuff to deal with. I feel very excited hearing you point out a sense of stronger boundaries at integral stage. And um, I'm relating to this through a personal experience from last night. Um, I was at a, um, a party, a gathering with Tim, and it was a very green event. It was a compassion camp potluck. And the culture that's there is that like, oh, we're you know, kind of like Burning Man. Like we're very heartfelt and very open and very dropped in and present and emotionally attuned. and. Um, that's an environment that I used to live in quite a bit myself and loved playing around there. And as I've transitioned into integral, those environments feel kind of icky to me sometimes. And don't get me wrong, I had a great time there, but there's a sense of boundaries being crossed in those very, very green, um, open-hearted environments uh, that, that comes up for me. And I've learned to assert stronger boundaries myself recognizing the way that culture is happening there is different from the way that cultures and groups gather in other environments. I can adjust my boundaries accordingly um, to attune to others and also to feel more relaxed and protected um, myself as those boundaries shift. Yeah, I can connect with that. For me, going into second tier is very much connected of being able to set boundaries and not feeling bad about it, being able to use and want to have rules and not feeling bad about that. And also having the permission, myself giving me the permission to show up. 
while uh, before it was as, as, as if I needed the consent or the ap approval of the others to do what I do. And in, it is a sort of personal freedom to come up into a, a, an integral level. And, and it's very scary on the other side because you have also the whole uh, responsibility and you cannot say, oh, it's because the group and, you know, things like that. It's, it's just you and you, you have to, to stand upright. And when you make errors, you make errors and you have to admit it. And uh, it is the learning curve to, to show up as, as you with your truth. Um, and I can share a short thing, which I, uh, happened to me yesterday. There was a memorial here in Italy in an Eremo, in a, in a remote place, in a remote church in 44. Eight American um, escape prisoners were killed by Germans. And there was a memorial uh, thing up the hill and then afterwards a meal. And old people and whoever wanted to speak came up and talked about this event. Some people were still present and Saw, the, uh, saw that. And I felt at a, a certain point, I have to go there. And I grabbed the microphone and I said, I'm German. And I want to apologize for what my people did. It was not that I, you know, it was not even a decision. It was just something I, I had to do. And I was wondering, maybe there was no other Germans around, probably not, but it's, we, we have to acknowledge what we do wrong. And not only personally, but also collectively in my, in my sense. And this is also what I find with stepping into integral. It is not anymore so much about me and what I accomplish and what I'm doing. It is much more what can I do to help to accomplish a, a, a greater whole in some way. So that's also freeing in many ways, but also full of responsibility. And, and you know, <laughs> scary. Yes, I'd like to pick up the theme of, of accepting more responsibility as part of what comes with the greater freedom, the greater energy, the greater vision, all the wonderful greaters than the previous stages is the increased awareness of responsibility and this is where I'll bring in nonviolent communication where I see very much as a tool to help people come up to and consolidate in second tier. We, one of the things we learn in nonviolent communication is to take responsibility for our own emotions as they arise in a very beautiful and positive way and I'm still very much on a learning curve with this but I've been using it in my own life as hard feelings arise to just accept them and be present with them and really feel them and go into them and say, welcome, what do you have to show me? And this is the taking responsibility because in it, like with what we've been saying about green, where we just push that back into the outer darkness. Oh no, we're compassionate. We don't, we don't feel like that. We're, we're not going to accept feeling like that. Well, if we can just sit with it and be aware that my feelings are arising in me. And as Zen saying is, I'm not responsible for them, I'm responsible to them. But to be really be present with them, no matter how dark or ugly, and see what they have to contribute. And I've worked it with a few three, two, one things myself recently, but the accepting of the responsibility, even at that level, with the cognitive and tools of aware, increased awareness that we have means that that becomes available energy also to do what we need to do. And a lot of those dark things are self-protective. And when we, then, and once we acknowledge that, we, well, then we can do things like Heidi just did, which is just very spontaneously move with that energy out and contribute something positive or protect a boundary, uh, uh, um, acknowledge a boundary where we need to protect ourselves. So I would take that sense of responsibility. I'm now adding that to my list of things. Um, qualities of second tier is increased responsibility in a positive way. Yeah, I, I was thinking that to me, I think there are like two obvious flames of that. I think one is like, um, I think of like stewardship or um, something about like sort of reaching down below. Like when you learn about spiral dynamics, or you learn about all these different levels, there's a way of kind of like, um, a responsibility that comes on that in a way you're you're aware of why everybody matters um and there is this kind of 
you know, like if somebody's kind of slamming like red or green, like watching green kind of slam into orange and all this kind of stuff, like there's part of like juggling this, they're all right, but then also trying to um, protect and all this kind of stuff. And I also think what comes with this, and this is, I, th I think a sort of journey that probably I found difficult is coming into like leadership um, that in a way you're kind of at a certain, certain leading edge or um, what kind of comes out of green is like, you actually have some authority again, but like you actually have some, on the one hand, there's a massive amount of not knowing, but on the other hand, there's a, there's a huge amount of knowing. And also I think, um, I, I was thinking of this when you, when you were talking, Karen, that I think integral is sort of like, it's not really kind of all right anymore just to say that you're triggered. Um, just to be like, oh, I'm having this big stress response or I'm having this big kind of, wild thing that i think integral there becomes an ability to even though it's like still really difficult but to be able to sit with things that at green are a bit uh overwhelming or sort of seems to me there's a kind of culture of like cuddly like oh let's make everybody feel better let's not sit in the the difficult more uncomfortable stuff um which is yeah, it's just quite it's quite a combination to kind of like contain all of all of that and to be compassionate and be aware and all this kind of thing. It's kind of um, the one hand I think very exciting, or the other hand it can be at times like really disorienting. Like oh man, I've got I've got to try and include all this stuff and there's so much of it. Um, one of the things I'm curious about is when people are, are saying like I moved into integral or is so-and-so integral my question is kind of like if you look at it developmental line by developmental line um it can I think you know because because that's kind of something that integral or Wilbur emphasizes is kind of doing a line by line analysis can be a little bit more nuanced and so for myself as an example I feel fairly confident saying that my intellectual line of development is at second tier uh, I don't really know about, I can't say with a whole lot of confidence that other lines of development are there. Um, but I, I can say that my, my intellectual line is kind of my leading edge and hopefully that will pull other lines like value line, moral development, ego development, all these other things up there. Uh, but I don't, I don't really have a lot of confidence saying that I'm, that most of my lines are there. I think it, it can become mathematically a little bit more challenging if, if I, like when I, I was saying on the forum that when I was 17, I found Wilbur, I, I really went to Wilbur and read all the books and um, was able to kind of apply integral thinking cognitively in, in college. Um, but my other lines of development were like at red or even purple or blue. So it was like, well, in that case, it's kind of hard to calculate someone's center of gravity if one's, it's one is really high and another part of me is like lagging way behind. And it's kind of like how to, I don't know how to average them out. And I guess it's, I don't want to put you on the spot, Jeremy, but I, I do have a kind of a question kind of to um, springboard towards you is about how any of this resonates with Gebser's understanding of integral and especially some of the complaints I hear is that integral, you know, as, as articulated by the Wilbur gang is too heady. And maybe Gebser can say something about the, the raw experience of that and, and kind of getting out of the headiness and maybe how we can experience what Gebser is saying integral is subjectively so that I know it's like, for example, I don't, I mean, maybe I'm not integral. Maybe only my intellectual line is integral because I don't experience time in the way that Gebser is describing. So I don't know if you have any light to shed on this. Yeah, this is, this is, um, it's interesting for me to navigate this because I used to be in my, just here's my part of my biography for to answer that question. Um, I used to be very interested in spiral dynamics and Ken Wilber and developmental psychology and sort of maps and theories of everything. It was very cognitively satisfying to, to really dive into that stuff and explanatory. And that's why it was cognitively satisfying. But um, I, I, I don't, all of these descriptions of development and finding where everything belongs on the map and kind of holding all of the, the, the kind of abstract complexity this doesn't resonate with me at the level of what Gebser is talking about with presence. So for him, it's in the immediate presence, all of these structures, everything that is to be, everything that has been, 
everything that's unfolded and will unfold is present right now. And presence is something that we can concretely and tangibly experience. Um, so that's the orientation for integral is it has nothing really to do with cool maps and heady spaces, right? That and Jamie Wheel had an interesting interview recently on Rebel Wisdom where he was really <laughs> laying this down um, as, a, as a kind of a loving critique of the integral theory community. And I, and I definitely feel that um, everything he said there, while certainly framed in his, his own experience, I, it feels very true. But um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean to, to really get that though, to really kind of get this distinction, um, the difficulty is understanding that everything we're talking about in our entire framework, um, instead of seeing it as a sort of unfolding of, of uh, stages in this century and like the kind of the culture wars and the playing of the pre-modern, modern, modern uh, or traditional and then postmodern, um, the mental form of thinking is a, is a kind of phenomenological structure that underlies the entire discussion, perspectivalism which is what we've been using to kind of describe higher and lower, where things fit on spatial grids, which line of development, um, that the whole expression of unfolding as this kind of conveyor belt of evolution. These are all very kind of mechanical, um, uh, um, uh, uh, spatially designated forms of thinking, which is wonderful. That's the mental. The mental is great at that. It, it, it invented it. It wrote the book on it quite literally. Um, but that, that's not what Gebser's talking about with the integral. And I think this is the, the challenge here. How do we talk about growth and emergence, et cetera, in a nonlinear way? Um, and I don't just mean in a like kind of multilinear way where there's like multiple lines of development, but I mean, we're still kind of using the same orientation, the same structure to talk about something that's bigger or more complex or more intensified than the structure. Um, uh, than the mental can even kind of grasp or express. And I think this is why the integral gets caught and stuck because um, the discussions tend to go towards these spaces where we kind of get stuck in the cognitive and that ends up being the critique with integral theory. Um, I think it's actually because we're not really kind of claiming and concretizing the mental that we're actually using to talk about evolution and emergence and unfolding. Um, so that's, I don't want to make this an integral crossfire, but this is a sort of, I want to inframe this by saying this is my own experience of hearing these things because it's a sort of, it's been a point of tension for me to try to articulate things and kind of point out where I felt that we, something was off about integral in my own journey. Um, and gaps are helped to, to help understand that and concretize it and clarify that. Um, so. It would yeah. be perfect, Jeremy, if you did a crossfire or, or an explanation, a whole session about that, because I really would love to learn a little more about this. We're setting it up between Karen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, yes, we're setting up to have a crossfire between me and Jeremy, and I am so mm -hmm. looking forward to it. And yes. I will riff a little bit on what Jeremy said, and then we'll package it, defer it to our crossfire, and get back into experiential stuff. Um, I, my take on this is that um, we're using integral for two different things here. I would personally would place that ever present where the presence, the presence where you are present and it is all present, past, present, future, lateral in five dimensions is all present. I would place that a third tier rather than second tier. I think second tier is on the way there and some of it starts seeping through into second tier and helps draw us up in that eros process. But I, my sense, and we can take this further in our crossfire, I would use, I think that term integral as Gebser is using it is actually third tier and we're using integral here to mean second tier. Now this is an intellectual cerebral distinction, but if we're using words and images, we are by definition using the intellect and so now I'd like to take it back into the more experiential. Um, my experience at that, at that What Now conference 15 months ago was that here's a group of people, and I was probably the median age at 67, although there was a healthy sprinkling of uh, Gen Xers and, and millennials and so on, but, but I'd say about half the people there were, were, if anything, older than I was. Lots of 60s, 70s, and a few 80-somethings, and I have never seen such an assembly of people at that age where we're who were healthy and vibrant, even though their bodies were in the third 
third of their lives. I mean, we, we, so many of the people there were shining with health, even with the aches and pains and, you know, you know the, the things that come with an aging body. This was a group of people who were in their bodies in, in a healthy way, who were excited to be there. And we had that flowing energy. It was so exciting to be around each other. And with that flow where we can disagree and have it be wonderful. And oh boy, what fun. This is even more fun. Because let's face it, conflict is more interesting than everybody around sitting, singing Kumbaya, right? And we did that too. But especially the women were more embodied than the men. The women who were presenters, let's say about a quarter of the presenters were women. And they were in all of their, you know, bodies, instincts, emotions, mind, spirit, etc. The men tended a bit more to be heads on sticks, but they were healthy and radiating healthy at their age too. It was, it was an embodied experience and an experience of flowing emotions, the, that, that subtle energy, the we space, um, the instinctual health, the kids playing in the aisles, um, it, all, the, all the aspects of our being from the biological on up into the spiritual, all vibing, present, healthy, flowing. So yes, we can take it into our bodies and into our emotions and into our instinctual expressions and so on and, 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 and move back and forth among all the levels on all these diff in all these different aspects. So that, that was my second tier of experience of the What Now Conference. I think Kate, Kate, did you want to say something before? Uh, I was just back to what Ryan was saying about First of all, I, I, don't, I don't know you, Ryan. I haven't you know, been around you or any person or anything, but I, I think you're probably like rating yourself a little lower on the other lines. You know, you <laughs> seem to have a pretty present, you know, way of being on and manifesting the way you speak. But you said something about you were kind of hoping maybe or something that the cognitive line was going to kind of pull the rest of it up. And I think that is sort of a bent that there's almost a, privileging of the cognitive line in integral, you know, where we, and, and, you know, but I'm so happy to hear what Karen just said that, the, you know, because I was in the integral institute thing in the nineties and, and I probably wouldn't come back with the description that Karen is giving here. <laughs> Not that everybody looks sickly, but it definitely was more of a egghead kind of, you know, head on sticks kind of scenario. So, um, you know, just this, I'm glad to hear all this talk about embodiment, of course, then that can kind of go into some murky waters too, but just that way of knowing, you know, and anyway, I just wanted to say, I, you might be a little deprived on the sleep line is, is all it looks like to me, Ryan. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Kate. I, I appreciate that. And uh, you're correct, especially about the sleep line being deprived. Just to answer with a, um, two positives, Ryan, to that question as well, because I feel like I was just sort of uh, pushing a little bit and kind of going, here's, here's the tension. Um, the, the, po the, the positive expression of integrality or the, your question about GEPs or why, why, what did GEPs do to help, um, moving into specifics and concretes, I think it was how he was looking at his approach looks very directly and, and really tries to encounter works of art, language itself, aesthetics, you know, that um, as experiential as you can get for a very heady philosophical text, he really tries to almost commune you with, with the artwork of a people. And by doing that, um, you, you become open, you know, the walls between you and the, and the, the, the creator of that artwork, if you're receptive to it, maybe you can glean something about their, their, their consciousness. And so um, to me, that was a really very, very helpful way to kind of get into the structure and really kind of not just know it, but um, as he describes with the mythical, to, to, to understand the mythical, you have to undergo, not just think about, it. it must be undergone. You have to go into it and go through this sort of psychic process. So, and we all gone through that. So to go through something, to undergo something with the structures was very helpful for me with, with Gepser. But then um, it's this, it's this caught for me, the integral is this very, uh, speaking of presence, but, but tangibly, qualitatively, it, it feels in those moments where, where maybe I'm a little bit less 
in my own little ego. Um, it's this kind of relaxing opening, um, not a unity exactly, right? But but um, a, a, a diaphony, as, as he uses, a kind of an open sky. And we're all kind of like in that Dzogchen image of the, of the clouds in the open sky and forms are sort of appearing. Um, but there's a sort of openness that goes through everything. And in those, th those moments are very kind of rarefied and subtle, but they're, they're deeply mm, encompassing. You know, I, I feel as if my, my selfness can arise in here and not necessarily need to fade away, you know, and it's in that presence. Um, so there's a kind of an openness of beings that I think is, is part of the flavor or characteristic of, of integral presence for me. And I think that openness of being is actually what helps us move out of cognitive conceptualization of the other and, and into something else, the kind of the quintessence of, of the other, um, which can move into the theoretical stuff. But I just wanted to leave that in there too. I'm, I'm a little bit with, um, with Carol on this. Like I, I've only recently just started to think about I'm going to use the spiral, so like yellow is integral and then turquoise is the thing above. That it sort of feels like um, that some of the kind of like being in the heady part is possibly just a little bit of a, a struggle at integral. Like there is a certain way of like having to map all this stuff with your mind that at times you're going to sort of uh, get lost. But I think it sort of fits that I think what should come out integral is the kind of like, oh, is it chicken and egg? It should be like, oh, it's both. It's both chicken and egg. Or it's... Um, in terms of like the mind and body, um, like those should be integrated. Like sometimes I think of pure, like too much mind is quite orange and too much body is like uh, green, where it's like super touchy feely. Um, but to me, there seems to be this natural process. And me and Ryan were talking a little bit about this, and we were sort of riffing with like just talking about dynamics um, in crossfire or like human relationships. There's this real like challenging puzzle to the mind to be like, what's going on here? There's a sort of move from unconscious to conscious to make distinctions. And it's all this kind of scattered information and it can, it's kind of exciting and uh, there's a struggle to see the whole. And then, I don't know if this is the move to turquoise or not, but like once enough information or wholeness seems to come, it seems to drop down into the body or what feels to me like the subtle body. Like, um, even to the point where we've kind of come up with phrases that seemed like almost symbolic or like, uh, for example, one of the ones that we were, we were talking about as we were riffing was just the simple idea that like making the unconscious conscious, um, not just in a green way, but like in all different ways. And that was so, so encompassing, but we sort of had to wrestle with all this stuff, all this information in our minds. And then when that kind of, was enough it just kind of seemed to get distilled down to this very like experiential level um and i don't i don't know if that's a move to turquoise but it kind of feels like that, that way to me i think maybe that's maybe that is part of the reason why some of integral is too heady um that it might just be like it may just be a struggle at that stage um and also a kind of a shadow or sort of like like getting lost in it but i, I think my hunch is it kind of, I would imagine it, it has to have a certain amount of mental, especially when you're, you're coming out of green and uh, green has a very sort of like anti-intellectual, uh, anti-intellectual bias. Yes, yes, Paul, as I um, define this to myself, at every stage we move up is a greater coming into con another, something more comes into consciousness. It's an increase of consciousness at every stage. And as I see that the distinction between the two levels of integral is that that first stage, which Ken Wilber calls teal, is necessarily a bit heady. And Paul, you just articulated it. It's in counter distinction from green. We're kind of pushing off from green. Artic we're articulating structure again because green at its unhealthy demonized structure because any structure is hierarchical and evil and a power dominator thing. So you end up being kind of mush. So I see at the first half of second tier, we're articulating structure again, and that's uh, a Gebser as well as Ken Wilber's quadrants and lines and so on. And it does seem um, um, 
just cerebral for a while because we're struggling to see how all the pieces fit together. But then as we go on further, we start to inhabit it and live it and it becomes organic and moves easily and we flow and it's all this stuff. And we realize the conscious, the, the, the intellect's not in control. It's just, it's on the council, but it's not the ruling voice. It never was. There's a much larger picture. And something Ginny Whitelaw said at that What Now conference, she knocked my socks off more than anybody else there. She said, once you get in, I think she was talking about second tier, is you don't so much think through solutions to problems as you metabolize them. And I love that, that really stuck with me. And I think Jeremy, maybe that speaks to your sense of the, the, the living presence right now where you're not mentally leaping from one idea to another as you're, you are integrating, you're, you're, it, it's coming together in, in an organic metabolic whole. You're not limited to just the intellect, poor intellect trying to rule everything. It's all working together in an organic way. Uh, Karen, exactly. <laughs> uh, I wanted to just quickly chime in and just resonate with that very strongly because um, this has been a, a topic for my course. We're reading through Ever Present Origin and a lot of students are integral theorists students or spiral dynamics and so they're coming to this for the first time and they're asking like and they're describing really interesting ways of how this is sort of tangible for them and how they're encountering it and that seems to be the thing that's always described which is yeah like I'm not like putting the pieces together like yeah I was doing that a little bit I was trying to and in the exasperation of that not being adequate the, the the present is somehow able to kind of inform that order as that organic ordering of the whole and that openness to not human totalizing, synthesizing, but the sort of a human or non-human sort of, I don't know what we want to call it, creativity, intelligence, complexity, the flow, the organics, it, it starts to be able, we start to be able to be open to it. It starts to be able to express itself in us. And then our maps and our language and our understandings move out of just sort of systemization and into, again, when I was saying cystasis, which is that organic ordering of the whole. Um, and it's that, it's that intermediary place where we're sort of navigating that, that liminal space between mental thinking and system. And then um, whatever's beyond that uh, or through that, helping to inform it. And, and that's a very interesting space to start to inhabit and, and live in. So I just kind of want to resonate with you there. I want to say something about, just to go back to Heidi's original question about what was the shift that brought us to Interval. And I think mine was a little bit different in that I was living in Boulder and I was very involved in a you know Buddhist community for the last 40 years and, you know, true blue mythic, you know, whatever you want to call it. And um, then I got very involved in the NBC community for many years. And um, I, I, you know, I was kind of looking for antidotes. I was always looking for an antidote to the culture I was in. And NBC start, started Friday, and then I quickly needed an antidote to NBC because it was kind of, you know, I hit a wall with that. And I, and I, and I you know, started going to Integral Institute things. And it made a lot of sense to me, you know, to frame what my issue was, was that I work with prisoners and cops and police officers and, you know, people that are not, that are not any, gonna be ever probably anywhere near second tier. And I'm always asking the question of, and the, and the methodologies that we have and that we use that work for working with our minds and working with our development, all that just are not of interest at all and are not helpful. And um, so and I train people to go into prisons and do this work. And lots of people want to do this kind of stuff, like thousands and thousands, you know. And, and I, I go, <laughs> lately, I, the last year I've been going to all these people, integral coaches, you know, they'll offer a free coaching class. <laughs> I'll go to these people that charge like $10,000 for a, you know, coaching session. I'm exaggerating, but, you know, they're pretty high level. They've got a lot of information for people at Orange about ways to coach them, you know, developmentally. And nobody that I've come up with, that I've had long conversations with, has anything that they could even begin to say what would be a good moves to make with prisoners, for example, you know, who are really suffering and want change. They really do, you know, and they're in the suffering, suffering, locked in horrible, you know, all quadrants are, you know, in a suffering stage. 
And it's like, you know, all they can say is, well, Maslow's hierarchy needs a stone on the bottom, you know. But it's just like, okay, so we're trashing millions and millions of people, you know. And so it's just always been this question to me, like, is there any practical application to this? You know, is there anything? And, and so, you know, I mean, I could have a consult with you, Jeremy. Would you have anything? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, 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 you know, like I talked to Tom. He was a fantastic person to talk to, but he didn't. He, didn't, he said, I don't know. They all kind of go, I don't know. I have nothing. They kind of, it's kind of amazing to me how I've talked to people in the current Integral Institute, and, so, and they all just go, I don't know. It's kind of. They all say that. I have nothing. Interesting. Um, yeah, we could talk about that. I don't know. It's an interesting question. I feel like there must be somebody in our field who, who is trying to do the same kind of work. Um, so, yeah. Well, well if, if anybody hears of anyone, oh, maybe I'll oh, go. How, how about just, Natalie? Oh, sorry. I just want to say. I think that to me is is um. I think that's a great point, and to me, it makes me think of some of the possible problems with integral. I think there's a certain uh, at times, massive bias to the top of the, the ladder and sort of like less interest in, in the lower levels. Like, yeah, yeah, red, blue, yeah, there. We've all kind of like got that pretty much nailed. When um, I think the more the more integral I get, the more I realize that integral is not as integral as I, as I thought it was. Um, and I thought the, the, uh, the interview with Jamie Wien or whatever his name was, like just kind of... Um, slamming a bunch of stuff and saying like you know um ken kind of backed like so many people that were like dodgy as hell um and i think this probably alludes a little bit to what ryan was talking about of like different lines the fact that i think most people in the integral world probably have a cognitive um line of integral like maybe that's i remember hearing people like ken have said that that's possibly kind of the first line like it's possibly necessary for all the other kind of stuff but like, it seems to me there's been plenty of behavior that I wouldn't class as, I, I would probably class as fairly red or blue or like all this kind of stuff. Um, and I don't put like, and I've, I've heard people even in this group sort of talk about like wanting integral to come out of the clouds or to actually do something. And I, I suspect it has to do with um, embodying the lower levels that in one way it's exciting because you can be a trailblazer at the top of the leading edge. But on the other hand, it's like, if you just make beige or red or blue or whatever it happens to be more healthy or more slightly more integrated than they are, then that's as much sort of um, changing the world as doing some profound, even though it's a lot more sort of humbling and less exciting. Um, and it's sort of a, I, th I think the fact if, if there is a lack of that in the, in the community, then it's just, it's probably like some blind spot, or some bias. Like I think, uh, I think we should be doing that. I know like some of my, my sort of personal interest does converge with um, being more on the lower levels and actually, you know, if it's people like in prison or therapy or people who are really on the fringes. Um, I, I suppose I'd, I'd like to see integral doing, doing more of that. Just Thank you. I think on. Natalie needs also to speak. I don't know if it is really uh, important to say, Jeremy, and then we give Natalie the space. Oh, uh, Natalie, why don't you go first then? I guess, Kate, did, were you with us for our earlier talks on uh, beige and red and uh, blue? And I feel like some of the, the things that we talked about there have been helpful um, with understanding how to support those earlier stages. Um, for me, and uh, I'll leave it there for now. I'm just a little bit groggy, so I'll see what else comes up and hand it over. Thank you. I, I just wanted to point out too that um, in, in Sri Aurobindo's Integral Yoga, uh, the emphasis is not, it's two triangles, right? There is the yoga of ascent, of, of kind of the serpent climbing, but then Integral Yoga is more concerned with the yoga of descent. He describes his yoga. My yoga is the yoga of descent. And for for Aurobindo, is this idea of bringing down the supermental into the his description of this right is is the ignorance is the is the pain body is the physical material body that needs 
needs that sort of divine intelligence or, or creativity to enter into it at the heart of matter, right? Like Tehard talks about that all the time. The heart of matter is the divine. So we need to go into the heart of matter and understand what evolution in, in the body is. And so I think this movement downwards, actually, um, even using this up, upwards downwards model, which I don't particularly prescribe to, but even thinking of it in that way, moving downward and reversal, I think is really important. Not reversal as in regression, but reversal as to bringing in that presence or that understanding, which is consciously achieved into these spaces, into these structures. Um, I think that's really important work. Yes, and if I can jump in here, Kate, this brings, I'm so glad you, you said this because I have been for the last 24 hours imagining a future session of this chat group where we talk about how do we interact with people in first tier, how do we fruitfully for everybody interact with them hands on and I was actually imagining if you were up for it to kind of do a presentation at the beginning or something where just speaking from your from your heart and gut from your experience. What are the needs. I mean, I think in order to make this happen and make real what Jeremy just said really bring the that higher energy down and heal and help and 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 enhance the health at all levels. We need to like mine, like miners go underground, like mine the experience of people like you who are working hands on with people at these levels, what is needed, what would help um, try to practically make these connections and get that flow going. So I was actually in this last 24 hours leading up hoping maybe someday we could hear more from you, Kate, about your hands on experience. What is their need? What do they need? Um, is there anything they need that 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 we could we could start supplying at this level? Because people like you are going to have to be the ones who define this and chart this for others who have other resources. And people like you will will be the the connecting the connecting links to help you know well bring the transcendent into the imminent as well as the Im as well as us imminent striving to transcend. You know, get that flow going both ways. At this point, I want to make a suggestion that you, whoever has an idea of a topic, writes it in the Damiano platform, writes a post, and we, uh, we can add our ideas, what we want uh, to do. So that's not uh, subject to emails c going back and forth, but in one place, that would be really great. Just a quickie now, is anybody up for trying third tier next Sunday? Actually, next Sunday is Easter, isn't it? Um, do we want to, we, before you, we end, Heidi, you can think about, do we meet next Sunday and what our next topic will be? Is it that I decide? I don't think so. So <laughs> You can shepherd us through a decision. How's that? So what you, will you do on Easter? I'm at home. I could do it. I have, are you invited on Easter Monday? I have an Easter Monday branch in my house. So if you want to come over to Italy for some days, you are welcome. But Easter Sunday, I'm free. So. Yeah, I me mean, too might be up for it. I was actually just, just a very dry question, but it's always maybe someone can answer me. I don't understand why third tier is another tier. Like, what's the difference between third and second other than it's sort of, that's always about a little bit. Well, we could talk about it if anybody wants to. I actually don't feel very competent and uh, I like to, to talk out of experience and not out of fantasy or imagination. So I wouldn't know what to say, but maybe you do. Well, I would recklessly offer to shepherd a conversation. Most of it would be imagining what our hopes for it, what is our understanding, what might it be, because I don't think any of us will claim to be there. <laughs> but uh, we could have fun trying to talk about it. But that, you know, we could uh, pull a consensus out of this group before we break up today, whether we want to go there or not. Uh, have we finished the topic for today? Uh, is, is there something burning about second tier which needs to be said still before we go into the, the final part? There's something that I'm uh, wanting to share that I'm looking for on my computer. I have some diagrams and images that um, I've made to help um, depict it, which is 
looking at um, how we understand ourselves in the world through how many perspectives we can take, like first person, second person, third person, and so on perspective. And it feels related to um, working with earlier stages of develop development, like uh, blue and red, and then all the way up through third tier. So let me see if I can share this and talk about it. Um, Okay, it's not the one that I'm. Where and on? Natalie, whenever you show something with screen share, could you send it to me so that I can post it in the in the yes. website? Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, I have another better diagram, but this is the only one that I can find right now. And I'm going to share it. So, play. Okay. Here. Is, um, are you seeing the slide? You are. Okay, great. So, um, the red is like our uh, magenta and beige and also red stages of development. That's our own perspective that we can take. The next circle there, the blue one, is um, being able to understand another person's perspective and follow that. And usually we're doing that exclusively to some degree. Uh, the uh, orange is then understanding our own perspective for the first time. Um, really developing and having that ability to self-reflect to some degree and see your own trajectory. The green is then um, respecting that there's lots of different um, perspectives that other people are developing that are different from our own or similar to our own. And then as we get into um, second tier, there's yellow, which is understanding the context of our perspectives, the, the culture that um, our environment is creating that shapes our perspective and that there's lots of ways that our perspectives are actually shaped through that context understanding and then later on we get into um cycle and so what i what i feel like is really important about third tier is um recognizing that there's cycles that our perspective go through um it's taking like a the concrete understanding of layers of perspective taking and then adding the dimension of time. So with supporting earliest stages of development in growing, um, just in sh sharing with people, uh, so I don't have a clear way to say this right now, but uh, Supporting people that have that are, are really focused on just others perspective with recognizing that there's ways that we create our perspectives can help shift um, the, those earlier stages of development. I'll leave it there for now. Thank you. Just to resonate with what um, you were saying there about time. Um, it's, it's not something I wanted to deep dive into completely, um, but uh, for Gebser and and just sort of this other integral expression, this alternate alterity, um, time is is the realization in in the integral structure. It's the nature of time, and it's understanding there are different forms of time. There's the mental developmental time that goes in a line in a trajectory. There's the mythical rhythmicity of transformation in the cycles, the sort of Oceanus and the turning of the world, um, the, the polars, the polarities of our own soul, the Eros and Thanatos, right? Death and love and creativity and disintegration. Um, there's the magical timelessness, which is a sort of now. And, um, and then of course with integrality, integrality is, it's somehow the sort of amensional holding of time, all of these different forms in that process, still being able to express unfoldment and emergence um, and co-presence. So temporics become the, the quintessential uh, expression and study and, and attempt to understand beyond the abstract, to understand our own processes. Um, and which is, you know, I think 
the phenomenon of our age. It's time. It's, it's understanding deep time and evolution and um, even developmental psychology and everything, even though I've kind of placed a, or expressed attention there, it's still expressing time. It's still a concept of time. It's still an attempt to understand it. So yeah, I just kind of want to throw that in there. That time is such an important dimension of, of, of integrality for me. And it seems that you're resonating there, at least with second tier um, or third tier, right? Or you were mentioning third tier, so. <laughs> it's part of what bridges that gap, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very excited about that too. I feel like that's what creates the space between um, the very highly mental world that early second tier lives in and the transpersonal as we start to uh, take the cycle of those perspectives a little bit less seriously and rest in that timeless, spaciousness and let them dance rather than having to try to control the way that they dance so mm -hmm. so intimately mm -hmm. um, because trying to control that is imposing the forward movement right that's just imposing another form of time so like oh they're here in this being this form of sort of being in the world let me allow that and just sort of really kind of get it and be there for a while and, but also I understand there's this other form of emerg emergent time happening. So yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, lovely. Yeah, it's, for me it's like we become less stuck in 3D space and one dimensional time. It's like we still recognize it and we're st we still live in it, but we recognize that there are larger contexts. Um, I love Jung's statement of this. When Jung was in his 70s, he had a heart attack and was um, nearly died and was bedridden for months. And he would go into this um, kind of larger aperspectival experience during his nights and in his days, he'd be stuck in a horribly suffering body. And he had these experiences. He talks about them in his memoir, um, Memories, Dreams, Reflections, which I highly recommend. His deep experience of this time and space outside time and space. And it, 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 was, it was the divine marriage, the Heros Gamos, the garden of the pomegranates. He has, I mean, being young, he came up with these astonishing images for it and ways to express it. So he, I can't do justice to it. But then he would contrast this with during the days when he would be stuck in his suffering body. And he called it, oh, now I've got to go back to the box system. It was like a system of little tiny boxes that you had to cram this vast consciousness into this little array of these tiny boxes of three-dimensional space that you're experiencing in a sequence of linear time, and it felt so imprisoning to him. And he spent, I think, um, weeks or months moving back and forth in his days and nights between the larger and the more cramped consciousness. So that, that stuck with me, the box system. And so for me, at second tier, we start, our consciousness starts to expand beyond the box system, however we cognize it and express it as obviously in intellectual terms, but we start to actually have some experience of a larger consciousness. And I've been taking notes, you know, where um, we are, well, you know, I'm not going to try to go through my notes now, but we start to go there and we start to experience it. And then where I think I would draw the line with third tier is, third tier to me is where that ever present origin, where we inhabit that consciousness already. We, but to me at second tier, we're, we're not there. We have other wonderful things that we're exploring. This whole list, I will type them up. Um, the notes I took, just kind of my list. This is the territory we're exploring. It takes a long time to really internalize this and make it a place we live from instead of something we think about. That, that's a lot. This is a, a page full of stuff. I mean, we can take our time getting to third tier. This is so rich. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type up my notes and post them. Thank you all. It especially feels important to make that integration take a long time so that healthy third tier can be that much more healthy by the time we're starting to step back and kind of go let go of that control um we really have to have a lot of understanding integrated that's been a hard adjustment for me to come from a um uh, you know have a lot of stage development or sorry state development and so come landing back in this very very mental calculated world of early second tier has been a very very hard transition for me in that way um, and before we end, there's one thing that I wanted to share from another resource about um, second tier, which is 
uh, um, Terry O'Fallon and her stages matrix that she's been developing. Um, there's this lovely little packet that she's developed and I wanted to read what she says about um, what she calls the strategist stage. She's reinterpreted and redescribed and re um, categorized some of the stages. And what she said is, Our consciousness includes getting to know others, our interior voices, and many cultures, as in the earlier stage of green. But in addition to that, we can create systems that allow for the greater good to occur for everyone involved. How can we organize our own mini culture to create the best experiences for those around us? And I feel like that's what we're doing here on these Zoom calls. Um, how can we best design an interior mini culture for all of our interior voices? It's that shadow work. How can we use our understanding of our own interior to make a better exterior world? And how can we use the understanding of the exterior world to make a better interior life? So for the first time, this reciprocality is happening. We see all the social, contextual, cultural, and psychological feedback loops and begin to adjust them so they will create the best outcomes for everyone. I think that was beautiful, this session. I'm very glad about what we put together. And I really appreciate, Jeremy, this your different vision of, of integral, which is enriching the conversation hugely. Thank you very, very much for showing up with us. And we have about five minutes. Shall we do a short check out what, what was the most important thing for us today? What we learned, what we noticed, whatever you want to share. And then we might talk about uh, next time Easter, or we I do a doodle or something to to see if enough people would show up. Well, this has hugely enriched my understanding uh, and sense of participation in second tier. And I will type up the notes I've taken on the attributes of second tier and, and post them on Damiana's website and platform. I think for me, this has been a really interesting um, conversation. It's I think my third, third or fourth that I've been with y'all and on between Thursdays and Sundays, um, and uh, I also had a very short night. And it may be that, but one of the things that I noticed was my the amount of space that I needed of, of like quiet time before I was quite ready to speak was like a second less than than another person, sort of time after time, and. I ended up, um, yeah, it makes me want to push myself a little bit more to just say, yeah, what I have to say is, is worth saying because there are things that I wanted to participate in that I never quite gave myself the opportunity to. Um, so at least it feels good to share that because I was definitely feeling um, like I wasn't a part of it um, through my own lack of agency. Um, and uh, I guess one little tiny thing is that I really, really enjoyed um, Jeremy, your description of, I think it was the metabolizing of decisions, or maybe that was you, Kate, I can't remember, someone on this side of my screen. Um, but uh, that was, I thought that was really beautiful. Sort of the puzzle assembles itself, but there's still that need to get all the pieces. You know, the, the sort of mental aspect of making a decision, there is still that sort of proactive, perhaps, um, at least in the early parts, uh, um, linear way of thinking of like, oh, I need to gather information. But once it's there, you sort of sit with it. I really like that, um, that image. Really appreciate you saying that bit about um, you weren't quick enough on the draw to say something, Tim, because it just brought, it sort of illuminates, you know, groups, group dynamics is a tricky, trick. I know Heidi and I have talk, talked a little bit about it in email. It's a, ter it's a tricky territory. And it is someplace where it sur the things surface like, are we including everybody? Are we actually tracking 
you know, everyone in the field and getting an equal airtime or, you know, not equal, but, you know, just so that everybody's voice can be heard. I really appreciate you saying that in such not, you know, in a kind way. I'll try to keep and I want to add, uh, when I see people unmuting their microphone, I get the sign they want to speak. And then I have them to, you know, I just interrupt the others and I say, now it's time for you. So this is a hint. If you need more time, uh, but you want to speak, unmute your microphone next time. And I will give you the space. Or Ryan, whoever does the, uh, the moderation. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I really like the, that share from Tim. I think partly because I it makes me think of Crossfire. Like I've done quite a lot of um, circling, which is pretty feels like a pretty profound practice. But there's something about taking all of that and making it integral that feels more, um, I don't know, maybe even more expansive and alive and and challenging and all this kind of stuff. And as someone I, who I feel like I have to actually like rein myself in to not like I'm sort of bouncing on my seat to speak because I sort of get so excited. It's kind of um, I appreciate the but the other the other side of it. Um, sort of trying to trying to relax myself, and I think on the that's cool. I don't know. I, I sort of I really appreciate like integral being like really kind of teased open, like so many different perspectives. I think there started to come out this distinction between um, depending on what map you use, but like yellow and turquoise, and I started to feel like I could literally feel into the, the difference. I actually feel a bit like kind of spaced out, like my sort of subtle body when I was, I think I was listening to Karen and then uh, Natalie, um, where I think I really like what seems to me like both flavors, like really unpacking things and being very intellectual and sort of um, using this kind of hacking distinction. And then what I think I sort of became really aware of is like, um, was it co-create? I can't remember the co-creation or whatever that your diagram showed, Natalie. Um, I think one of the strongest ways to me is like just being aware of the we space. Like that's such a that's such a strong uh, subtle thing, and I think I've enjoyed that every single on every single call. And um, I think Crossfire is kind of interesting as well because it's sort of somewhat trying to trying to analyze it, but there's such a sort of special material, uh, mysterious kind of. Uh, thing that it feels like we all kind of share, even though it's quite uh, hard to define. And um, yeah, so it just felt like a great experience of like the intellect and also the, I don't know, subtle and being more embodied and, and all this kind of stuff. Well, I, I also want to appreciate what you shared, Tim, and also sharing your experience and kind of what was coming up for you and I also want to be more sensitive to people or, or situations like that because I tend to be someone who's more kind of quick and so making more having more space you know and uh, being aware of that and, and knowing that some people operate more like that so I appreciate you sharing that and also kind of shows me what I can uh, work on developing um, so during this conversation there were several threads going off <clears throat> so I thought I, I could just take a moment to kind of summarize them and kind of give my closing thought on them. Um, so one of the, one of the topics, one of the themes I felt like, and Jeremy, I appreciate you being the kind of the go-to Gebser, kind of another perspective on integral guy, but um, the kind of overly intellectual, you know, mental headiness that some of us had uh, described and alluded to and how um, that is, that is something that I, I wonder about too, because for example, my sister has a serious disability. So cognitively, she's, she's 33 years old. Cognitively, she's about 13 or 12 years old. And I wonder about someone like her, can she ever be considered integral? Can she ever get to integral because her cognitive development is so stunted? And maybe she is in her heart and soul. Maybe she's third tier way above my level, but I just will never recognize it. And so it, it really, it's an interesting question when we talk about in society, is this person integral? Is that person integral? Well, how can we recognize the emerging integral structure if we only base it off of their intellectual capability? Maybe there are a lot of people out there who are actually integral at, at that stage, but we just don't know because they don't talk about it in the same way that Wilbur talks about it in all this mapping and systematizing. So I kind of want to, to make space for that. Um, as, as far as uh, Kate's comment about the, the prisons and things, I think that, um, 
one of the things that comes up for me is I think that's also very like industry specific skill set. And I think another problem that some integral lists tend to get into is if I know integral, I can do it to everything. And you do need to have in specific skills related to specific things. So I'd be very curious to have to, if there was an integral person who was expert on working with prisons or the population that you work with, what they would have to say and how they could specifically apply that in. And um, uh, two more things. So the other thing too was about, um, it might be fun next time or in the future to do kind of brainstorm what integral institutions look like. So what would an integral uh, prison system look like? I think that'd be something I'd be very interested in talking about. And uh, finally, about, I appreciate people's comments too about being mindful of how much people speak. And because I rewatch all these videos to do the timestamps. And it's, to me, it's very obvious that some people definitely speak more than other people. Some people only get a chance to share at the beginning, at the opening and in the closing. And sometimes people will share three or four times before the, someone has spoken at all. And, um, I, and it's funny because, you know, we're, we talked about time and second tier. I think being, maybe being mindful of being self-aware of the time that you take up and also being mindful of if other people are not getting a chance to speak is kind of a good integral type of practice. And one of the things I thought about doing, although I, I kind of want to run it by everyone first, is that when I take the timestamps, I will also record how much everyone speaks and to just list the time limit. And so not, not, not to try to like shame anyone or be like, and also not to have a sense of like constriction, like, oh, you, you can only talk for three minutes, but just, just, just putting it out there. But yeah, just being aware of like, okay, this person talked for 25 minutes and this person only talked for four minutes. And just kind of being aware of that and being mindful of socially sensitive about that. So that's just something I want to offer. And thank you everyone for, uh, very much for the discussion. Just wanted to thank uh, Ryan for what you said and, and Heidi as well for, for both of you holding the space um, and helping to create this container. Uh, appreciate your facilitation. Um, I, I feel a lot of resonance actually. It sort of started as this, oh, we're talking about stages. and I, I don't know. But then as we kind of opened that up, I felt a, a deep kind of resonance with my own understanding of what integrality could mean and um, actually kind of acknowledging some of the um, uh, the critiques that are going around about integral theory and over cognition and the desire to kind of go in right the desire to go in and and for knowledge to be alive and living and I think we share that um, especially there we share that so yeah is somebody missing is everybody spoken Natalie Mm, um, I love these conversations, uh, and they're also very challenging for me um, in some ways. And and yeah, I'll leave it there for for today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I love these conversations too very much. It's so enriching. I learn a lot, and that's why I'm on the in the world to learn. <laughs> and you helped me to do that. And um, yeah. Sometimes I think we are still a little bit too much in the in the theory and we could go down into more practical aspects and more sharing about experiences which illuminate what we are talking about, but maybe it will come. And yeah, let's uh, do a doodle for next week and uh, collect the topics. If we shall go ahead and speculate about third tier or if we do something else, if we do the quadrants or if we do something completely different let's do a, a good thread in the in the forum and share what you want to do and whoever has to share um so resources i remind you do it on damiano and i can also take it from there and put it on my website i want on first of all that my website is growing it should be a hub for for integral conversations and so i want to have these things in and also all your recommendations, all your insights, which can be scripted, and I will post them there too. Okay, can thank I, you. Can I just say one more thing really quickly? Um, I just want to say also, I appreciate also what Natalie just shared about how it was challenging for you. And I would, as, as someone who's, you know, maybe moderating Thursdays or just kind of as a, you know, as we all can have de facto leadership here, it would, it would be very helpful for me and also very enlightening if every, if, people kind of shared 
what their challenges were in the conversation so I can be more sensitive to that and also kind of like what you're working on. So the book, uh, uh, Robert Keegan's book on developing an everyone culture about creating de deliberately developmental organizations, their spectrum is, uh, is called the um, overconfidence scale versus the too shy scale. And people tend to fall somewhere on that spectrum of being like, I'm too loud and too overconfident and I'm too shy and I'm, I don't talk enough. And it's kind of, and maybe we can all kind of share um, if we felt drawn to like over email or on Diamond's platform, kind of like what you're working on also internally in these calls, just so I can also be more sensitive. If someone needed more time and say I process more slowly so I didn't get a chance, it'd be really helpful for me as a facilitator to be mindful of that so I could make more space for people. And also if people have a tendency to ramble too much or, you know, on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's also be helpful for me to be mindful of that and, and know how people are working on that. So I just want to throw that out there. And I always would recommend the platform and not emails. So it's accessible for everybody. Okay. So maybe we see you next week, otherwise in two weeks. Okay. Have a good time. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.